Here's our matrix 3D, our vector 3D. We need to make a constructor for this and unit test it. Uh, again, you can skip all the unit testing videos if you want. I think they're rather useful. Uh, I also noticed we had this delme.cpp when we were trying to just compile the matrix 2D. I forgot to remove that and I didn't commit it to SVN so I can simply just hit delete there and delete it. Uh, let's build, make sure we're still good. But recall, we're not building the game project because we're kind of in the middle of code there. And I turn that off. Okay. I want to start organizing this a little bit. You remember on this view I have show all files turned on. So we see the actual folder structure as it exists on the hard drive. Now there's some disadvantages to that. We see everything. Thus we see the debug folder where all this stuff gets put. Um, and we also see the IPCH files. So, And um, just, just the stuff we don't want to see. So I could go say don't show all files, but now I have this virtual setup and then I have to set up virtual directories which don't won't necessarily coordinate directly to what's on the hard drive and then when I pound include things that goes off what's on the hard drive and so that could be different from this and I have to keep them synchronized so I have made a religious choice to say show all files and I'll just organize them as this and I don't care if these show up visually but we haven't set that up for the engine tester project nor the sandbox game and I think now that we have multiple mathematical tests it'd be good to group those tests into one single folder or at least a virtual folder so I'm going to actually use the virtual folder approach in here so you can kind of see the two approaches side by side. Remember here if I say add new folder I can actually literally add a folder to my hard drive whereas here I can say add new filter which is a virtual folder that Visual Studio it's giving us the illusion that we have folders when we really don't everything's in the same directory so let's go here and add new filter and I'm going to say it's going to be math tests and in there I want to put matrix 2d and vector 2d test in here and then I could make a folder for clock tests but maybe I won't because when we get to profiling and stuff like that and we start testing that it may make sense to add a folder for that but at least I'm grouping my other tests here because I know I'm going I'm about to add a vector 3d test and also a matrix 3d test and then just looking at this, I'm actually quite embarrassed. I have a capital D here and a lowercase d there. And that's not consistent. You may think, well, Jamie, we can live with that. But Jamie can't live with that. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to work in a clean environment or as clean as I can get it. And this is inconsistent naming. Am I going to use capital D or lowercase d? But I shouldn't swap. That could be confusing or a confusing message to other developers that work with me on a team. So let's go and fix that. I actually... If I bring in the folder here for my my uh, project, I go to Engine Tester, and notice here we made this Math Test folder, but that folder doesn't necessarily exist here. My Matrix 2D tests are still in the root Engine Tester project folder, and same with the Vector 2D tests. Uh, but I want this D to be a capital D, so I'm actually going to go Tortoise SVN rename. It's important that I, where's rename, right here. It's important that I do this through SVN so that uh, the changes are committed up to the server as well. If I just do it locally, the changes won't necessarily propagate to the server. And so I need to do it here. Rename it to matrix2dtest.cpp. And then over here in Visual Studio, I'm going to click on our project. And, uh, oops, not there, there. We need to tell our project to update what it sees here. So let's let's say show all files and still it sees that D is lowercase d and it's still lowercase d. If I build it still finds the file but I want that oh it's just driving me nuts. <laughs> I want that D to be uppercase. So one way to fix that is to restart Visual Studio. Uh, let me just go show all files again lowercase. Let me restart Visual Studio. I'm going to pause the video while I do this. And now, for some reason, I have the refresh button. I don't know why I wasn't getting that before, but let me say refresh. And it still has a lowercase d. Hmm, this is kind of frustrating. It's uppercase d now. Let me, uh, let me just commit here, SVN commit. And I'm not going to commit these. I'm just going to say renaming matrix 2D file or test file. and click OK 
And then that's good. So then in here, see it's matrix 2D uppercase. Click here, refresh. And it's still lowercase. So I'm going to go all out. I am going to say, don't show all files. Math test. Let's say this isn't part of our project anymore. Delete. And it's going to say, do you really want to delete it or do you just want to remove it from the project? I'll say remove. So the file's still on my hard drive. I'm going to go back into show all files. Ah, now I have an uppercase D. Right click here, include in project. Go back to the virtual folders. Drag this up in here and we're good to go. So part of this is just learning how to deal with Visual Studio's quirks. And maybe that was too much of my video to talk about Visual Studio quirks, but anyway, I, it's maybe like a stick shift. Every every car is different. Who knows? We need to do uh, a constructor and actually do some tests here, but I, I'm i going to stop the video. Just <laughs> Sorry to make one video just dealing with Visual Studio quirks, but I also think that's important to show that we have to deal with quirks and learn how to debug those quirks, and then we'll get on to making our constructor as we were planning on doing when I started this video.